This video was made possible by Brilliant. Learn complex STEM subjects simply for 20% off by being one of the first 200 people to sign up at brilliant.org slash H-A-I. Alright, so if you see a little metal circle sticking out of the ground, it's probably a landmine. Run! But also, maybe it's a geodetic marker. There are around 1.5 million of them in the US alone, and if you go to this map, you can probably even find one near your house. For example, this one is next to my house. Except that that isn't really my house. I'm not telling you where I live. This is just a random abandoned Chuck E. Cheese. I live in a totally different abandoned Chuck E. Cheese, and it's way nicer. So why are there these millions of little metal circles littering this great nation of ours? Well, you know how sometimes in life you need to know where stuff is? For reasons? Well, generally the only way to ever explain where anything is is in reference to other things. For example, West Virginia is south of Ohio, North Carolina is east of Tennessee, and Belize is somewhere in Africa or something. Look, I'm not a doctor. Anyways, that's what these little metal circles do. If, for some map-making reason, or some other personal reason you don't want to talk about, you need to say where a house or river or abandoned Chuck E. Cheese is, you can use a nearby marker as a reference point. When you add up all these little markers, it creates something called a geodetic datum. Generally speaking, there are two types of geodetic datum. The first is a horizontal datum, which measures distance across the Earth's surface, longitude and latitude if you want to get third grade geography about it. The second or other type is called a vertical datum. It shows what some might call altitude, or others might call height, or what even others might refer to as how much big off ground. The US has a long history of putting little metal things in the ground. When they don't explode, sometimes they make up the original horizontal datum system, the North American Datum 1927, but friends call it NAD27. Each of the markers listed its name, which you could look up in a massive chart to find its official latitude and longitude, which were all created in reference to a single marker in Meads Ranch, Kansas, which was chosen both because it was as close to the center of the contiguous United States as we could figure out, and because Meads Ranch is an anagram for hand creams. This spot right here was declared to be 39 degrees, 13 minutes, 26.686 seconds north, 98 degrees, 32 minutes, 30.506 seconds west, and this angle from here to here was declared as 255 degrees, 28 minutes, 14.52 seconds from north, and then everything was built around that reference. Now, did that turn out to be exactly right? No. But did we try our best? Well, like, probably, but honestly, who knows? All the people we could ask are super dead now. The original vertical datum system, the National Geodetic Vertical Datum of 1929, was created in 1929. Sometimes it's also called NGVD29 because those are the initials of National Geodetic Vertical Datum and because it was made in 1929. As a vertical datum system, it provided information on how high above sea level any given point was, but given that sea level is different in different places because of reasons, its sea level reference was actually the average of 26 tidal stations located here. But a lot changed between the 1920s and 1980s. Microwave popcorn was invented, and probably other things happened too. Eventually we figured out that there might be better ways of doing the knowing of where things are. So, in 1983 we made a new horizontal datum, NAD83, which instead of being based on hand creams in Kansas is a geocentric model, which means its reference point is the center of the Earth's mass as calculated by a complicated thing called the GRS-80 spheroid, a mathematical model of an ellipsoid that approximates the Earth's shape based on existing survey data. NAD83 markers set the GRS-80 spheroid's projections for the equator as zero latitude and the Greenwich Mean Line as zero longitude, and then each spot's coordinates are calculated based on where they fall on that ellipsoid projection. Then, in 1988, we said to ourselves, hey, if George H.W. Bush can beat Michael Dukakis by 315 electoral votes, surely we can make a new vertical datum system. And so we did, and called it NAVD88 in honor of its dad. This time, instead of basing its sea level reference on an average of a lot of stations, it sets a single reference station, Father Point, a charming spot right here in Quebec which sits at a height of, well, uh, sea level. Now, if everything I said before was confusing and you got lost, don't worry. Soon none of it will matter at all because the US is currently undergoing an effort to replace NAD83 and NVAD88 with an entirely new system, the yet to be named Datum of 2022, which will probably end up being called something boring like NAD22, but for which I'm proposing we call Channing Datum. Why are we making Channing Datum? Well, for one, because NAD83 is off the Earth's center by about 2.2 meters, and NAVD88 is quote, both biased by about half a meter and tilted about one meter coast to coast. And for two, because it turns out basing all your maps on a bunch of metal cylinders in the ground that people can move or steal whenever they want isn't always a great system. 
Among other things, Channing Datum will do away with separation between horizontal and vertical datum and create one unified geopotential model. Instead of a sea level reference, it'll use something called a geoid model, which is kind of like an ellipsoid but all bumpy based on variations in gravity. An updated ellipsoid will be used for the horizontal component, and instead of using millions of dumb metal cylinders from the 80s, this new model will use only reference stations that continuously get GPS information, which you can see on this map if you have nothing better to do, which, given that you reached this point in the video, you probably don't. Also, if you, like me, get confused and angry and start screaming uncontrollably when you come across words like spheroid and ellipsoid and you, unlike me, don't have a writer who can do a bunch of research and soothingly explain it to all of you, you can spend that free time checking out Brilliant.org, the best place to learn about new topics in STEM. Whether you want to learn computer science, review math and logic basics, or get a grasp on concepts in finance, whatever your STEM interest, Brilliant can help you learn it intuitively, bit by bit, in manageable chunks, with an active learning style full of active problem solving and logic puzzles. They're really the experts in making complex subjects manageable. For example, I really struggled with math in school, but Brilliant really helped me pick up things I missed about super useful math-based subjects like statistics and probability. If you'd like to join Brilliant's community of 8 million learners, you can get started on topics from cryptocurrency to geometry for 20% off by being one of the first 200 to go to brilliant.org slash H-A-I.